I'm Gary Carter, and in the next few weeks, we're going to learn what it takes to launch a startup from initial concept to launch. We have a team of mentors from Silicon Beach and a team launching their company right now to help us learn about the process. We embrace and learn from our successes and failures. Welcome to Concept to Code. Today on Concept to Code, we're going to learn about UI UX. What are some of your favorite apps? Are they simple or complex, depending on the user? How do you create a user experience your customers will like? And where do you start? To answer these questions and more, I'm pleased to welcome our guest mentor, Ben Faithy. He's the creative director of DTE Media. Ben is an interactive designer and product developer, focusing on user experience, design, and developing and development spanning mobile, web, e-commerce, and enterprise software. As the creative director of DT Media, Ben enjoys building beautiful products with intuitive experiences that just make me people happy. Ben, please join us. Hi, Gary. Thanks for coming to the show. Pleasure. Well, thanks for that wonderful introduction, Gary. Uh, as Gary mentioned, I am a UX and UI designer. Uh, I've worked on many apps. Uh, and what I want to talk to you guys today is, what is UX, what is UI, what are the processes, again, how do you approach both of them? What are the process? What are some of the tools that you can use? And what are some of the takeaways from this conversation? So let's get started. What is UX? I get, asked this, I get this question asked a lot. What is user experience? And again, looking at it from a holistic viewpoint, user experience encompasses all aspects of the end user's interaction with your company, with your services, and your product. What we're concerned with here today is actually your product. Uh, so how does, your, how does your user use your product? What's the feeling that they get? Are they happy when they use it? Is it simple for them to use it? Did it solve their problem easily? Did, what was that feeling when they got after the first time they used your app? When they turned off your app that first time, you know, if you were to ask them, what was the feeling you got? Did it solve a problem? That's what the experience we're talking about here is. Now, in relation to UI, if you go to the next slide, UI is a user interface an interface that you interact with software. So think about a plane, right? All those little knobs and gadgets, those are how you interact with the plane. Now for a piece of software, the little buttons and the slide and the imagery, that's the UI. That's the thing that you're using to control the app. So looking at UI and UX in relation to each other, UX is a very holistic thing. Again, it's talking about the experience of your app, the experience of the user with your service and company, and UI basically just falls within a small segment of that. Uh, and that just has to do with the design of your app, how you control the app, and UX, again, it's the whole experience of your app. Now let's go to the next slide. Now how do you approach both of these things? Uh, next slide. Most people, here, here's what the pitfall is with most people. Most people start with beautiful. So if this was the way they would approach building a piece of software or building uh, an app, they would start with beautiful and then work their way down to usable and then useful. The problem here is that when you focus on beautiful, nine out of 10 times you'll end up with something that's useless. You shouldn't focus on how something looks. Looks is, comes in last. Again, if we were to go to the next slide, the appropriate approach to UX and UI is to start with the usefulness of the app. You know? And to do that, you gotta really focus on the problem. What is the problem that you're trying to solve? Uh, when you understand that really well, it puts you in a place where you could start the development of your app or company or, or web platform. Again, start with the usefulness. Focus on the problem. Then move your way down to usable. Is this a usable software? Is this going to actually help me solve the problem that I had? So to, to achieve that, to achieve usability, focus on simple and intuitive solutions to a problem. Don't look at all these complex ways of going about fixing a problem that exists. Uh, start with simple and intuitive solutions to big problems. And then once you have that figured out, then you move down to beautiful. Make your app or, or web platform beautiful. That really should be the last chain in the process. Uh, now let's go to the next slide. Now, how do you approach, what's the process to take with both of these? Now the process to take, again, and I'm gonna reiterate this point throughout this whole presentation is, you have to really identify the problem. How are you going to build a solution to something that you don't really understand? So have a really good grasp of the problem, 
understand your target demographic who you're solving this problem for. And some of the tools that we use in the industry are personas. Personas are basically a little story about who the user is. What, what do they look like? Are they, what age demographic are they in? What do they do? Really understanding what the customer does. And use cases, what are they gonna use this in? Is it gonna be at the store, at the grocery store, at the pizza shop, at a, you know, their favorite store that they go to? Really understand where your product is gonna be used, in what context, who's gonna use it, and once you have that, then you can move on to actually sketching out what the solution is gonna look like. And anyone can do this. Don't think that you need an expert or somebody who is you know, a UX or UI artist to start wireframing or sketching out your product for you. Anyone can do it. If you've ever played with an app or used an app before, you can actually wireframe apps. So start out with sketching out the, sketching out the solution that you guys are thinking about, and that entails wireframing. And then once you have that, we go to prototyping. So prototyping is, is a way, prototyping is a way that you actually make a replica or what your app should be and how it should function and you get it in your hand and you actually start to play with it. When something's on paper, it's so much different than when it's actually in your hand and you're actually using it. Um, it, it just the, how it feels, how it functions, how the screens flow into each other is all part of the whole experience. So again, you would get into prototyping and testing and then finally you get into actually laying down the UI, which is again that beautiful user interface that's gonna get your you know, users intrigued. Now, what are some of the tools? Now, if you were to do some of this stuff, go through this process, what are some of the tools that you could actually use at home or you know, do it yourself as far as getting started? Now, Balsamic is a good wireframing tool. It's been around for a while. OmniGraffle is another one that's used a lot in the industry. Again, both of these products are fairly simple to use, <coughs> very inexpensive as well. UX Pin is a new tool that's come on the market. Uh, again, these were all built that anyone can use it it allows you to drag and drop buttons, shapes, boxes, fields, anything that you could actually have in an app. It allows you to play around with it, place it, put it, uh, put it on the app, put it on different screens, sketch out what all these screens are gonna look like. What is it gonna look like when your app actually starts? What is it gonna look like when you log in? What is the first screen you're gonna see? What is the user homepage gonna look like? What is your account gonna look like? think through some of this and even eventually if you do hire a UX designer or a professional to come in and look at it it's great for the person who has the idea to really go through these steps themselves as well now these are some wireframing tools next is prototyping tools one of the best ones that I truly love is Envision it's extremely simple you could drag and drop pictures create hotspots and it, in fact you can send a link to yourself on your phone it'll download on your home screen as if it was a native app you start the app and it functions as if it was a real app. Again, it's just images with hotspots on top of them. Envision's a great tool for that. Again, it's fairly inexpensive. Anyone can use it. We use it heavily in the industry. Every product that we build, we prototype with Envision. Proto.io is another tool that we use as well. This one's a little bit more intricate and complicated. Uh, again, this, all of these tools were built for anyone to use. Uh, it allows you to do much more complex stuff. For instance, scrolling screens, uh, sliding screens, uh, all sorts of stuff. Again, two great solutions to prototype your solution, prototype your product. Uh, these can be used for mobile apps, web apps, uh, pretty much anything. Now, the next is testing. Now, testing is very important. Once you once you understand the problem, you thought you've come up with the solution, you need to get it out there and test it. How do you know that users actually like it or what you build actually works for them? Usertesting.com is a great platform for that. Basically for a small fee per user, uh, you give the users a task to do. They sit behind a the computer, they videotape themselves actually going through your software and you get to see how they interact with it. Are they getting stuck at a certain screen or not? So user testing is very important. Uh, that's uh, in the process as well. And then Loop 11 gives you a bunch of tools as far as testing your product. Uh, next slide. Now, key takeaways. You know, when building a product, always gather diverse, diverse input. You're going to hear this from the other experts and the teams. They're going to tell you input from your users is very important. Narrow in on the solution. Don't try to be everything to everyone. 
really focus in on that solution and that's the key to your success. Sketch and try things out. Don't be afraid to get a pen and paper and actually draw out your app. Uh, design for useful and usable. That's the main thing. Forget about how the app looks, that comes later. Focus on the solution, how useful and usable it is. And then after that, make it beautiful. And then continue to test and iterate. That is probably one of the most important parts. Once you get it out there, test, iterate, test, and iterate. And that's pretty much it for this conversation. Thank you for that Thanks, beautiful Gary. presentation, Ben. Thanks, <laughs> Gary. When we come back, we're going to meet our startup team favorite and listen into their discussion with Ben on UX UI. Stay with us. Riding a bicycle can seem like child's play. But only if you're playing indoors. and bikes need to play together. Play it safe. Ride by the rules. Hey, share the road. Welcome back to Concept to Code, a show focused on giving you the skills to launch your startup. I'm your host, Gary Carter, and today we're learning about UX UI. Our featured startup is a company called Favorite, and the team will give our viewers an insider's view of their company launch. We're pleased to have co-founders Anka Aldenart and Andres Rodriguez, a favorite. Thank you, Gary. So I'm Anke Oudenaert. I'm one of the co-founders of Favorite. Um, Favorite is a platform that aims at helping consumers kind of bookmark their physical world. So basically, our first product we're developing is an app that'll help users to save and share their favorite places and then also discover new ones. Now, before Favorite, actually, Andres and myself were co-founders in another company called JumpTime. JumpTime was focused on building software for web traffic optimization. Uh, we sold that company to OpenX, an advertising technology company in Pasadena. Before JumpTime, I was at Yahoo, where I was, uh, for about eight years, I headed up their market research. That's basically where I learned more about digital marketing. Um, and then now I'm also teaching digital marketing at Anderson UCLA. And my background is on research. Um, I, I, di I did uh, grad work at Stanford, and after that I did uh, research for many years in artificial intelligence. And we are applying uh, that background in developing an engine for recommendations for favorite. We want to make sure that the recommendations that you get as a user for favorite are based on your circle of friends. Um, and even before getting there, what we're doing right now is building an app where we can collect the data about the places that you like, you can save them, and based on that, we will apply algorithms and try to recommend to you the best restaurant where you can go, or the best trail, or the best shop to uh, go buy clothes, shoes, etc. That's great. Now, this uh, dynamic is, is unique. Uh, normally in the shows, our mentor comes and presents on a topic and kind of gives a critique. Well, in this case, um, Favorite has actually works That's with right. Ben, Faithy, right. on the UX UI. So yeah. it'll be interesting. I do want to know, and we want to know, the good and the bad <laughs> during this process. <laughs> but I'll let you kind of talk about the process and how, you, how you're continuing to develop the UX UI. Yeah, Sounds absolutely. good. Thank Sounds you. Good. <laughs> well, great. Let's talk a little about the process that we followed as far as coming up with the UX and the UX of your app, the user right. experience, mm -hmm. and eventually the UI that went along with it. Uh, so, I mean, what was that experience like for you guys? Yeah, so it was actually, well, it's been, it's been a very good experience all along, um, and we're actually very happy with the result that came out of it. Initially, so what really happened is I went to Ben with kind of pages out of a moleskin notebook combined <laughs> with some things I tried to do on PowerPoint, largely kind of a, kind of a layout of what I thought our app would do and how it would function. Mm -hmm. What I felt even through that process and how I did this was largely going to cafes and restaurants, sitting there, thinking about how this should work, how could we really solve these pain points of a user. And even just going through that, I felt like I had lots and lots and lots of links I had to think about. Then I went to Ben and both Andres and myself felt like a few screens, pretty easy <laughs> app to develop. And then Ben actually made kind of, that was the first thing that Ben kind of warned us on, like how you think it's way simpler than it actually is when you're going to develop it. 
Um, so then we went into that kind of UX development. And I think another piece, and you touched on that, somewhat disappointing for me because I'm not a designer, I'm not a developer. So of course I would have liked for someone to come back and say the next day, here are the great <laughs> pictures, here's how it's gonna look. And I didn't get that. <laughs> we got all those wireframes, but it was a really, really good process to go through, definitely. Yeah, I think that um, I learned a lot from it. I think that probably uh, you were our first surrogate customer <laughs> in the sense that we had to um, sell you on the idea and the sure. back and forth uh, with you helped us solidify some of the concepts that we had. Mm -hmm. I think um, it was definitely a, 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 a very interesting experience. And like Anke said, starting with wireframes, um, like you already said in your presentation, it's a very good process because it takes away from uh, how does it look. Absolutely. So, so, so wireframes, it's about um, what is this thing doing? And once we, we, we get down on, okay, what is this thing doing? Then Lao, let, let's make it beautiful. So I think Absolutely. It's, it's... So a little about that process, if we could get mm -hmm. into it, you know, the steps that we actually took. Again, it was very refreshing working with you guys because you guys came to me having thought through some of this already. You guys, most people usually have this idea or a problem that they know they want to solve and then they come to a designer, somebody who they really haven't yeah. had any sort of interaction and they're like, solve it for me. In a way, that's, it allows the designer or the, the strategy person to have creativity as far as what the solution is, but it's good for the client and the people who are going to be running the company to have a good grasp of the process as well. And you guys were involved from the very beginning. And one of the things about design, whether it's UX or UI, it's a mindset. It's how do you approach this problem and how do you solve it? So we started out actually what outlining the demographic. What is the problem? Who is the competitors? What's the problems with them? really getting a good grasp of who are, who, what are we solving and who are we solving it for and how is it going to be used. And then we really start to outline it. And if you guys remember, we would have these sessions where we would print out the UX and sit there at the table and ju really just go to town with it yeah. with a marker and just mark everything up. That allows you to think through that. Okay, when they actually add something to a favorite, what happens next? How do they add notes to it? How do they save these notes? How do they recall it? How do they access it again? I mean, mm -hmm. these things need to be thought through. And we did that. And then really, was design, like really the aesthetics of the app, a main focus point in the beginning? It wasn't really, well, it definitely wasn't in our process. <laughs> I think it was just this element of, I kept wanting to know what it would look like so I could go show yeah. my mom, like, hey, look, <laughs> this is what it'll look like. It'll be really beautiful. That said, though, I think you pushed us very hard on the wireframes, and that was a very interesting process for us to go through. Mm -hmm. It was a very helpful process, and I definitely think the app is a lot better for it. What it also did, it made it a lot easier for us to then start our actual development process. Absolutely. So once you've got that laid out really well in terms of UX, mm -hmm. and you know what happens exactly when every link gets touched on the app, mm -hmm. that makes it possible for us to break out all the little tasks that the developers will have to take on. And I think yeah. without that interaction, we wouldn't have gotten as yeah. clear a path towards what our development would look like. And, and it, it also provides kind of a, of a framework mm -hmm. of uh, once you have all the screens together, then um, it's easier to build on top of that mm -hmm. because you're not just doing it one off at a time. You actually get to see at all of them in as a set, uh, as a collection, and then it's easy to imagine what the next functionality will come. I think that it's very important to have a very solid foundation. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I mean, yeah. it allows us to really scope out what the feature set was, what the development looks like, and then really allow you guys to take a step back and say, what is our MVP going to look like? Are we going to build an MVP yeah. with all these features in it? What are we going to leave for stage two, yeah. three, and four? So now moving on to kind of the UI phase, mm -hmm. you know, what do yeah. we go through there? I mean, we talked about the demographic, who are we yeah. trying to appeal mm -hmm. to, what should it look like? Yeah, and that was actually was also a very interesting process because definitely we had a demographic in mind. Mm -hmm. We wanted it to stand out based on its design because we know that that's going to be essential these days in the app world. Mm -hmm. Like design something that looks way prettier than what our competitors sure. have. Now, with that, we still had a certain mindset around what we wanted the brand to represent. We had this element of we want some 
image elements basically embedded in how the brand looks. So things like we want it to be delightful, we want it to be fresh. We kind of we had some elements in our minds, but we went back and forth a lot about like, is it more like this or is it more like that brand? Like what's the types of images that seem to fit it? What are the types of colors that are associated with that? So again there, we had a whole process that seemed a lot more extensive than what I initially thought would need to happen, mm -hmm. but it benefited us a lot. And again, with image selection, we were trying to really hone in on what the emotion that we're trying to invoke yeah. is. Mm -hmm. You know, focusing on that emotion, it was really important for us, right? Yes. So yeah. with sort of the image collection that we chose to incorporate throughout the app, it really gives you that, you know, good feeling about really loving the places and indexing your world and getting to know the place that you kind of call home and beyond yeah. that as well. So, and one of the things, um, sorry Gary. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that I wanted to touch on as far as looking at the competitors was, for example, we looked at Yelp and saw that Yelp was almost like a yellow pages. It was like a directory thing. It didn't allow you to fall in love with the place that you were actually at. Yeah. We wanted to take a new approach to that and make it very elegant, you know, allowing mm -hmm. that venue to really shine through and allowing you to make an emotional connection to the venue. Whereas Yelp doesn't do that. When you get there, it's Yellow Pages. It's basically just a listing of things, and really there's no emotional connection there. Yeah. Well, I think emotional connection is, is a great place to, uh, to close the show. Uh, we hope that the audience has an emotional <laughs> connection to the show. And um, thank you for joining us today, and when we'll see you back next time for more Concept to Code.